Hey, what's going on guys? How we doing? Matt Antonelli here. Hey, what's up guys? So today we're going to look at Garrett Crochet. He actually bypassed the minor league system since he got drafted this year in 2020, got drafted out of Tennessee by the Chicago White Sox and he just cruised through the minor leagues. And by cruise, I mean he did not play a minor league game at all this year, obviously. So one of the big reasons, obviously, his stuff plays. You see here, everything's 100, 101, 100 there. So things play, like velocity and velo play. He's a big build. He's six foot six, 218 pounds, and he has a very efficient delivery, and he moves like a little guy. So we're going to look at a couple things that he does incredibly well and try to pinpoint them and show you why he throws so hard. Now, lefty that throws this hard is going to play in the major leagues quickly very very quickly so let's go into his delivery and the first thing that i really want to cover is really his ability for his upper half to resist so his upper half moves away from home plate and his lower half goes towards home plate so his upper half resists the forward motion and the forward drive of his lower half very 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 well like incredibly well so if we get to this portion of the delivery here we're really going to see that he gets into a scap load so we're going to see this elbow come out and we're going to start seeing the hips clear and go towards home plate right so that's resisting each other as the hips and the legs are going forward the upper half is going almost backwards like pinching and retracting back into the scapula and you see that motion basically like right there we see that his hips are going his hips are starting to rotate towards the plate but his arm is still getting into scap retraction right before foot strike now this is an incredible move that you'll see a lot of smaller athletes do but when a big guy does it like this, your your results are going to be 100. They're going to be 101. When you're six foot six, 218 pounds, and you have such an efficient arm path that he has, he kind of stays in that 90 degree flexion position with his left hand and his left arm, and it's very efficient. It's very simple, and he has this timed out very well going into foot strike. But check out just before foot strike. So that's just before foot strike. The arm is at about, if if this is a 90 degree angle, let's just pretend we have a 90 degree angle here. His arm's basically somewhere in the middle of it. So it's hovering around 45 degrees. So that's most, if you pay attention to elite prime time throwers at the major league level, the majority of them are going to be somewhere in this window at foot strike. So the time that their lead leg hits the ground, they're going to be somewhere within this window with their arm path as they get into a scap retraction that way. And he basically has that timed out incredibly, incredibly well. But the most impressive part to me is the hips, the ability of his hips to almost clear all the way around towards the catcher and towards home plate as he's still in this scap load with the arm. It's totally impressive. I, again, I call it the upper half resisting the forward motion, the forward rotation of the lower half, or keeping the torso firm right as as you go through your drive phase and into foot strike and once we get into foot strike which is about right let's get there right there he's basically cleared his hips are are going through his back hip is going through the zone and his arm is making its ascension into external rotation through the throwing zone and into extension and i mean it is just this move here boom 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 of that lower half the lower half is firing and rotating towards the plate and the arm is still retracting back into his scap like that is an elite movement and he does it so prime so well he does it so much better than even a lot of major leaguers, right? So he's, he's on the upper echelon of major leaguers who are capable of creating this movement with their body. That's why we're getting those hundreds, hundred and ones out of this young left-handed thrower. Just complete flames on his part. And he's able to really, and this is the second part that I love, he's able to have a, a very good deceleration pattern. So guys with good decel patterns, let's pay attention to the back foot. Guys with good decel patterns, once they get to this point, you're going to see that their heel kind of kicks towards foul territory of their throwing side. So 
as a left-hander, that heel's going to kick all the way around, or not all the way around, but the, the heel's going to kick towards the first base side. If you're right-handed, the, the heel's going to kick towards the third base side. That's really just the progression of this hip getting through into the throwing motion and into through the throwing zone. That's like a really good sign that a, a pitcher is using his hips and his lower half very effectively. And it's the beginning signs of proper deceleration patterns. And as we go through the throwing zone with his arm and into extension here, we're going to see eventually, we're going to see this glove, excuse me, we're going to see this glove side open up just a little bit so that his throwing hand can come all the way around and across that glove side hip. Right, That move right there is going to create very good health. The arm isn't crashing against up the glove. The arm isn't too vertical in a downward path. The hand path is going in this direction here. So we get through the hand path. Right, This is the way we want our hand path to work. We get into pitch release, and it's going through and around my glove side hip. That's my hand path. And he does a really good job clearing the glove so the hand can come all the way around and really not crash against up the glove, not up against the quad or anything like that. That can really cause injury to an arm that has to halt and stop so abruptly because it's too vertical crashing against the quad or you don't clear that glove side and allow that arm to flow through the zone. Now, we keep going through his decel pattern, and I'm big on this, letting your energy flow, and his energy flows around a pistoled front leg or a blocked front leg, whatever you want to call it, a stiff front leg. His energy comes around, his shoulders come around a stiff front leg. Energy is flowing all the way around. None of his energy is ending abruptly. It is all traveling around his front leg in the fashion that it wants to without nothing really slamming on the brakes. Slamming on the brakes can cause injury, and that's something big that, that I'm on here. So let's look at everything in full speed, just a couple of his throws. And you really, really, if you start paying attention to his hip line, you're really going to see his hips firing before that upper half comes around. And the upper half is resisting the forward motion of that lower half. The guy's a stud. Like, he's an absolute stud. If I don't, I don't know anything about his command and how well he commands the strike zone. But if you're 100, 101, you can make one or two more mistakes than most. So I really see freaking some bright things. And I would like to see his, his off-speed pitches more, but I'm looking forward to watching this guy pitch. I mean, like I said, 6'6", 218, 100-mile-an-hour left-handed arm who skipped the minor league system because there were no minor leagues this year, and they deemed that he was ready. And not only ready, but ready for a team that's competing for a playoff spot. That's a big deal. So they, they really hold him highly in the organization which is fun to see so it's going to be a blast watching him pitch down the stretch this year and years coming forward so hope this video brought some value to you hope you liked it do me a favor support the channel by smashing that subscribe button like share and comment and i'll see everybody next time